The first presidential debate is one week from Thursday. The campaigns for President Biden and former President Trump have reached an agreement on the rules. The debate will be held on Thursday, June 27th in Atlanta, hosted by CNN. It will last 90 minutes and will include two commercial breaks. There will not be a live audience in the studio and campaign staff will not be allowed to interact with the candidates. Both campaigns have agreed to allow microphones to be muted throughout the debate, only unmuting during the candidate's time to speak. Both candidates will also not be allowed any pre-written notes or props. They will be provided with a pad and paper. In a statement, CNN clarified the requirements to be allowed on the debate stage. All participating debaters must appear on a sufficient number of state ballots to reach the 270 electoral vote threshold to win the presidency and receive at least 15 percent in four separate national polls of registered or likely voters that meet CNN standards for reporting. Of the non-major party candidates running, only Robert F. Kennedy Jr. has a potential chance of meeting the requirements. So, John Heilman, your take on the rules and who they seem uh, to benefit? Well, I guess my take on the rules, Joe, is that they're uh, kind of all the important ones were pre-negotiated. And I don't want to uh, I know that there was you know, you're trying to hammer this out and get it all codified uh, was an important thing. But these were uh, putting aside the questions of duration. I don't think we knew 90 minutes versus 120. Uh, some of these things, podiums and co coin flips. You know, the key elements here uh, were the things that Biden and the, the Biden team and the Trump team agreed to before uh, a month ago when they first announced this debate. The no live studio audience is still there. Uh, the, and the, and, the, and the, the muting of the mics. Those are the two, I would say, you know, That's well, the rest of these things are relatively standard, uh, not, you know, the, the no, no written props, the notes and props things. These are all kind of things we'd seen before. I think, you know, Frank Ferenkopf from the, from the Commission on Presidential Debates uh, noted over the weekend that what had been agreed to here uh, was was good in the sense that he, mm -hmm. he felt as though CNN and these agreed previously kind of preset uh, agreements followed more or less down the path uh, that the Commission on Presidential Debates has uh, laid out. And those are kind of sensible rules. The one big difference here is this muting of the mics thing. And that is going to be uh, uh, the, the biggest difference. If there's uh, the, the biggest difference between what we saw in, 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 in anything in the past, never that Ben has been used in a presidential debate stage before. And I right. think there is a question, if you go back to 2020 and think about the disastrous first debate for Donald Trump, uh, the, the, the fact that the mics were unmuted and that Trump was able to, uh, allowed to, 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 to make kind of an ass of himself in that debate, actually worked to Joe Biden's advantage politically. So there are some right. who wonder whether the muting of the mics will help or hurt. It's kind of a difficult, it's, it's, it's brave new world territory. You've never seen Great this point. before. Right, it's, it's like Al Gore's first debate with George W. Bush, the sighing, yes. the moaning, uh, all that, that actually also worked against his... Do we know who is in charge of muting the mics? Mics? Is it the moderators or is it uh, a no, producer? No, they, 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 yeah, they better get it right. The, I mean, I, I, we, 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 exactly. we have all seen debates at, at critical times exactly. where sometimes the moderators do an extraordinary job and sometimes they're, they're just run over. abject failures yeah. and run over. I mean, and that's the biggest question here is um, will they be able to, if Trump is the kind of Trump we've seen in other debates, he has a tendency to run over moderators, just run them right over right. and lie and lie and lie and lie and lie. And then the moderators give up and move on. And well, that's unacceptable. It's a button. It's pretty easy to push. Press it. Let, let, let's hope, hope they, 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 they stick by the rules. Um, <clears throat> you know, Mark Leibovich, uh, let's talk about the 800-pound elephant in the room. Uh, you are going to have two older uh, candidates uh, who, whom, yeah. uh, both of whom uh, each side claims has a, is either not cogent or crazy. Uh, we've, we've seen all of the uh, cheap fakes of Joe Biden suggesting that he's out of it. And very, it's so fascinating. We haven't talked about it yet. I hope uh, we get a chance to talk to Andrew this week about it. But Andrew Ross Sorkin talked to a lot of CEOs who were in that meeting with Donald Trump, said the guy was just 
ranting and raving and rambling on and out of it and crazy. And as Andrew Ross Sorkin said, uh, several of those CEOs who went in and were predisposed to support Trump left less, uh, less supportive of Trump and more concerned, basically going, you're saying Joe Biden's bad? It can't be any worse than this. So it is it is going to be fascinating uh, watching this debate. I think there are going to be a lot of people on both sides holding their breath for 90 minutes. A hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, beginning probably with with, with aides very close to the two candidates. I, I think it, it is fascinating. I think the fact that they're going to be uh, they're going to shut off the mics is, I think, as John said, potentially, you know, kind of a backhanded uh, break for Donald Trump because he did look it was such a disaster in, in 2020. I think a corollary, corollary to that is. What's the cutaway going to look like? I mean, are there going to are we going to get to see mm -hmm. exasperated expressions and sighing, um, which actually was quite hurtful to Al Gore in 20 in 2000, if you think about it. So is, right. is that going to supplant um, the the interruption? Is that going to be kind of the other counterpoint that we're going to see in real time? So that should be fascinating also. Uh, but 90 minutes for people that age and, and people who you know can sometimes you know mangle all kinds of sentences and facts and so forth, especially Trump on facts, um, is going to be quite a challenge for the moderators. But also, I think it will be very fascinating to watch because I think that we will get a pretty unfiltered view of what these two guys are like in, in a very high stakes situation over a long period of time. And I just want to say that Biden has outperformed expectations in these settings um, you know, several times, beginning with the last State of the Union address. So uh, it will knows? be fascinating yeah. to watch.